I'm going to give you a top level uh, overview of the new curriculum. Can everybody see a uh, PowerPoint that looks like uh, get it on? It looks fine, Mike. Okay, great. Uh, this will be a top level look, but uh, those that want to get into um, a deeper dive into what Howard just showed there, I put a, a link in the chat. You can download that instructor guide. And if you'd like to have a better understanding of the research, the analysis, and the decision making that went into the new curriculum, download that instructor guide and take a look at the uh, introduction section. All right. So uh, this whole project started as a result of three uh, recurring questions. Uh, the first being that of class resets. Um, we've always told students they can start whenever they like, but there's ongoing discussion as to whether or not students would actually be better off to start at the uh, reset. Uh, the second question had to do with the origins of the uh, sequence of characters that we've been using, commonly referred to as the Koch uh, sequence of characters. And the third question had to do with character speed and a large amount of Farnsworth that we have been using and whether or not that was optimum for initial learning of CW. We started the project by doing a lot of reading and we read all kinds of historical documents. A lot of them were not really applicable to what we were trying to uh, learn, but several of them were. And of particular interest was the uh, 1936 report by uh, Ludwig Koch from uh, Leipzig, uh, Germany, and the 1943 doctoral thesis by Donald Taylor at Harvard. And after studying these, we came up with recommendations and we put them forward um, to our club founders. And after they reviewed them, they gave us the go ahead to start developing the experimental uh, curriculum. The first thing that we did was to try and figure out the origins of the uh, KMR sequence. And uh, this was the first of uh, many surprises because the so called Koch character sequence was nowhere to be found in the Koch report. So we continued looking and we found it. Turns out, it was uh, developed by Otto Lippmann in 1919 in an article that he wrote, which wasn't published until 1928. And Lippmann was the first to theorize that one could accurately predict uh, aptitude for CW or how good a student would do in CW by how well they learned their first few characters. And Lippmann came up with what he called uh, an obscure character sequence of varying difficulty. And what do you suppose that obscure character sequence was? KMRSU. And to 71 students, he taught that sequence. And he was correct. How well they did on that sequence was an accurate predictor of how well they went on to learn CW. So once we knew where uh, the KMR sequence came from, we then refocused on Koch because he developed two sequences of his own. And we collected as many character sequences as we could from CW training organizations around the world. We studied and analyzed all of them, and we again sent our findings to the uh, club founders. And from there, we decided that we would develop our own character sequence. And here, we took a cue from Samuel Morse and Alfred Vail. And recall that they attempted to determine how uh, frequent the letters were used in the English language. And this was before the days of Google. So they had to do research the old fashioned way. They went to two local newspapers and they actually uh, counted the movable type located in the type cases. And from there determined the most uh, frequently used letters in the English language. And to those letters, they assigned the easiest Morse characters. So we took a similar methodology, but we wanted to know the uh, frequency of character use in our QSO protocol. So we added up all the words and looked at all the letters. And from there, we determined the frequency of use of letters in our QSO protocol. And to the most often used uh, characters, we placed them earlier in our uh, sequence. Now, there were several characters that had the same weighting, and to those, we applied the recommendations that Koch provided for how to build a sequence of characters. 
we then added uh, numbers, punctuation marks, three pro signs, and BK. And we divided them between beginners one and beginners two. And what you see before you now is the new LICW QSO protocol character sequence. Armed with the character sequence, we then set up to uh, answer the issue of uh, class resets. And of course, flexibility is the hallmark of LICW. We encourage students to attend any class at any time. And we have encouraged them to begin in their beginner's one whenever they wanted to. The problem was that in a traditional linear curriculum, you begin at a set reset with only a couple of characters, and then every subsequent lesson after that, you're building the group of characters. And so if you don't start at the beginning or near the beginning, it's easy to feel, feel overwhelmed, and that's demot demotivational. And so uh, we started with a, a clean slate, and we tried multiple curriculum designs. And this was easily the most challenging part of this project. But thanks to some out of the box thinking by our core uh, curriculum development team, we developed the LICW rolling curriculum. Now these are standalone lessons that are grouped in what can be thought of as a carousel. And the carousel goes around and around. There's no beginning, there's no end. Students jump on whenever they wish, they come off whenever they like, and they progress whenever they feel that they're ready. The beginner's two carousel is slightly larger than the beginner's one. And after beginner's two, we have a capstone module, which is the culminating portion of the beginner's curriculum. And capstone lessons can be thought of as a combination of what we're doing today in B1, B2 review and in the QSO protocol classes. If we take a little deeper look, we see that Beginners 1 is comprised of six lessons in which we introduce 18 characters at a very relaxed pace. Beginners 2 picks up the pace in nine lessons, introducing 24 additional uh, characters. And even though those are standalone lessons, we bring forward all the characters from Beginners 1. And thanks to the new QSO protocol character sequence, we can very tightly integrate QSO abbreviations and QSO protocol into the beginner's curriculum. So now that we had a curriculum, we went back to the historical documents to see if we could glean some uh, information that might help us improve our teaching methods. And of particular interest was the Koch method. Now, contrary to common belief, the Koch method is not a sequence of characters. The Koch method is a method of introducing characters as acoustic shapes. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's take our first character, the R. You could easily teach the R as three elements, a dit, a da, and a dit. But uh, Koch did not want that. Koch wanted it played as a single acoustic sound. Did at it. Did at it. And Koch developed several techniques to amplify the acoustic uh, sound. The first being he would play the sound without even telling the students what character that sound was associated with. And he would ask his students to place a dot on a piece of paper every time they heard the sound. So did I it dot did I it dot. And only after that relationship was very firmly established would Koch let the students know what character that sound was associated with. So did I did R did I did R and from then on students would verbalize and write down the letter R. Now we think that's an extremely effective way of introducing characters and we have adopted the Koch method into our beginners one. Koch also had another technique to amplify the acoustic nature of uh, of the sounds. He used a two tone process. Koch elevated the tone of the da compared to the dit. I know that can sound a little funny right now, but that's because you already know the code. If you didn't, 
that would sound quite melodic and it would help you differentiate the dits from the das. And Koch proved that students that learned in the two-tone method learned the code quicker. But this is part of a broader study that we're in the middle of right now, and that is the relationship between music and learning in general and music and learning CW in particular. So now that we can dynamically generate two-tone, we'll be introducing that in future uh, beginners once. The last thing we wanted to address was character speed. Now, our club has had great success at teaching at 20 word per minute character speed with a high degree of Farnsworth spacing, bringing the effective speed down to about five words a minute. And there is a lot of support in the historical documents for teaching at 20 over five. Lipman supported it, Beagle recommended it, and as I said, we've had a great deal of success. But we've also had a couple of suspicions about it. The first being that students have a really hard time matching the 20 word per minute character speed with their early straight key sending. The second being that there's very little Farnsworth on the air. First time our students get on the air, they're not going to be hearing 20 over five. And so we really haven't been preparing our students for what they're going to experience the first time they get on the air. We've been preparing them for something a little bit further down in their uh, CW journey. So we again turned to the historical documents for guidance. And Koch did a lot of work. A full third of his entire report is all about this particular subject. And if I could summarize the Koch findings, he said, the characters had to be sent at at least 10 words a minute for them to be perceived as single acoustic sounds. But he zeroed in on 12 words a minute as optimum for initial learning of CW. Once his students were proficient at all the characters at 12 words a minute, then and only then did he start increasing the speed toward 20. And that seems a lot more consistent with our mantra of preparing students to get on the air. And so we have adopted Koch's recommendations and brought character speed down to 12 words a minute in our experimental beginners program. Well, now that we had a curriculum, we, we needed a way uh, to deliver it and a way for our students to practice it. And unfortunately, last year, our friend Ray G4FON became a silent key. And despite uh, gracious help, from his widow, we have been unable to find the source code. Uh, so we had to find another solution. And fortunately, our friend Randy, KN4YRM, was uh, willing to help us in develop a, uh, a trainer. He had already been experimenting with the uh, SC uh, Phillips library. And we know Steve Phillips from CW Ops and from his amazing Morse code world uh, website. And Randy worked tirelessly with us to refine the uh, interface, the usability, the tight integration of the curriculum and the uh, new character sequence. And what we have now is an amazingly powerful tool. It is a web-based cross-platform trainer. This will function on any PC, any Mac, any Linux, any tablet and any smartphone even if you're not connected to the internet. This is an amazing addition to our club. So in summary, we developed a new character sequence based on our QSO protocol so that we could tightly integrate QSO abbreviations and protocol into the beginner's curriculum. We developed a new rolling curriculum to once and for all address the issue of class resets uh, students begin when they want and they progress whenever they're ready. We adopted the best of the Koch method to introduce characters as acoustic sounds. We slowed character speed consistent with Koch's recommendations and our mantra of preparing students to get on the air. And we developed a web based cross platform training tool. Now, I had an awful lot of help in, uh, in doing this, and special thanks go out 
to Howard and Rich, our founders, for their incredible encouragement and support, and to our core development team, Tom, Dave, Randy, and Bob, for their tireless efforts and their support. We also had a core group of instructors that gave us invaluable feedback and special thanks to Bob RLC for sourcing the 1936 Koch report and having it uh, translated for us. 